fair warning, this video's intro went way longer than I anticipated. I had a lot of fun making it, but if you don't want to sit through that, to skip to the meat of the video, skip to the timestamp on the screen. Other than that, enjoy the video. Hello, and welcome back to the world of the living. I'm TGX. Wait, what, what day is it today? Yeah, it's December 18th. You know the significance of that date? Well, many, many moons ago, on a dark and stormy night, the planets aligned and the zodiacs went into Odvir to signify the birth of the one, the one man who would change the world forever. And on that day, the angels sang and the heavens opened up to bring the gift of this man who would change the world, who would leave a lasting impact like no other man before him. And that man's name was... Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who incidentally shares a birthday with me. Yeah, it's my birthday. I, I turned 21 today. Or rather, when this video comes out. To break the fourth wall for a moment. So you know what? To honor such an occasion, I'm just gonna kick back, relax, and review an old favorite. Hmm, what to pick? Ooh, how about Ape Escape? I've been wanting to talk about this one for ages. Oh, or how about Castlevania Symphony of the Night? This was one of the games that inspired me. Or... What the hell? Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout? Shit. <laughs> I haven't played this since I was like six. Eh, whatever. Ooh, I could talk about one of the Ratchet and Clanks, or, or, or one of the good GTAs, or... Bugs Bunny's birthday blow- didn't I already throw this away? Okay, whatever. Oh, I know! I'll talk about Infamous 2, one of my favorite games ever! Bugs Bunny's but what the? Get away from me! Now it's over there! Now it's over there! Now it's over there! Now it's down here! Go away! Obey. I'll review Bugs Bunny's birthday bullshit! That's not what it's called. You're not what it's called! Well, yeah. seriousness, it really is my birthday today, and it's going to be a lovely night of softly weeping and slowly drinking myself into a coma. But this being such an occasion, I wanted to take a look at something special to me, and I thought, well, there is a game that is very special to me that also fits thematically around birthdays, Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout. Aside from Kirby's Adventure, some of my earliest gaming memories are from Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout, uh, something like 18 years ago now. So, you know, when I had the opportunity to buy it again uh, a few years ago, I leapt on the opportunity, nostalgia brimming in my eyes. And then I played it for a little bit, only to realize after the nostalgia faded that it was one of the most painfully mediocre games I've ever played. And you know, Quadruple B's reputation kind of precedes it, what with it being star of what is possibly the greatest AVGN episode ever. But, you know, I thought, why don't we take just a more 
thoughtful look at it. I guess for the benefit of my younger viewers, I should probably introduce the Looney Tunes as well. If you've been living under a rock for the past 80-something um, years, the Looney Tunes is one of, if not the greatest cartoon franchise to ever exist, and I mean that genuinely. It's truly transcendent. You could be 8 or 80 and enjoy these cartoons equally as much with its expertly crafted dialogue and fantastic slapstick. There was so much life and energy in every frame of animation. It was hand-drawn animation at its absolute best and most creative, and is literally the only cartoon I can still enjoy as much as I did when I was a kid. But as the cartoon landscape of TV continued to evolve, the Looney Tunes fell into irrelevance somewhat, and these days, like Mickey Mouse, is kept around mostly for nostalgia with the odd embarrassing attempt at a comeback, like Lunatics Unleashed. Christ, that show was awful. Or the less embarrassing but still kinda crap Space Jam, which I think most people are a little bit too nostalgia blind to admit, and these days I'm pretty sure is only remembered fondly for two reasons. Lola Bunny. Boosh! Oh come on, I'm right and you know it. There was also Duck Dodgers in the 24th and 1 half century, which while less transcendent was, let's be honest, fucking amazing. Also that one forgettable cartoon from a few years back. Point is, over the past 30 years or so, they've been trying to recapture the spotlight but have been fighting a losing battle every step of the way. The reason I'm bringing this up is that it's easy for younger generations, or even my generation, to forget just how much of a massive groundbreaking cultural phenomenon the Looney Tunes was pretty much from the mid-40s all the way until the late 80s when Mel Blanc sadly passed away, and just how much of a big deal a video game tie-in was. And Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout also has the distinction of being the first Looney Tunes game, and I believe the first Looney Tunes media period, to come out after Mel Blanc's death. It was the start of a new era, and I suppose a sign of things to come. So this being from the earlier days of gaming before anybody really cared about development or pre-release, info is scarce at best. All we know is that Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout was developed by Chemco, best known for developing or publishing such games as the Top Gear series, the Crazy Castle series, Batman Dark Tomorrow. Oh. That's no good. Oh yeah, they also made the console ports of Daikatana, ah! and these days exclusively makes RPGs for Android and iOS, so suffice it to say they don't exactly have a fantastic track record, and Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout I wouldn't exactly say is their magnum opus, assuming they even have one. The plot centers around Bugs having his 50th birthday and getting a massive party thrown for him, which leads the other members of the Looney Tunes crew getting jealous that he's getting all of the attention and leads them to try and sabotage his party by taking out Bugs himself. Kinda drastic, but never mind. And spoilers is a bit of an inconsistency when they they show the characters scheming, only for them to end up being the ones throwing the party and trying to keep Bugs away long enough to set everything up. It shouldn't have shown them being evil and such if it wasn't their intention or the case from the beginning. Unless I'm misinterpreting, because none of this is actually said, maybe they just randomly have a change of heart right at the very end. But then again, this is a story in an NES game which is like analyzing a length of string. Even the groundbreakingly story-heavy Final Fantasy can be boiled down to four words, relight four elemental orbs. So the story in Quadruple B serves its purpose, however I will say it's kind of poignant that this game celebrated Bugs Bunny's 50th birthday and came out in 1990. Christ, he's older than my late grandmother. Speaking of which, where is she? Should have been here an hour ago. The game as it sits is an action platformer, or as Wikipedia defines it, side-scrolling adventure, and it was so very close to being an instant classic. But it's held down by an almost inordinate amount of mind-boggling design decisions. Now, the gameplay is your basic side-scroller, with a jump and an attack, in this case a hammer, but a simple setup is a good basis by which a classic springs. So there's nothing inherently wrong on that front. The actual enemy selections are weird. You have juice boxes, exploding clocks, angry suns, frogs, which I choose to believe are the singing frog, and some more indescribable things, so it's pretty uninspired on that front. I know they used most of the big names in the boss fights, but there were dozens of different minor characters in Looney Tunes they could have used as minor enemies. Speedy Gonzalez, Hector the Bulldog, Mark Antony and Pussyfoot, Rocky and Muggsy, the Goofy Gophers, and if they really want to get obscure, maybe Goopy Gear. That's really just a few examples, and no, before you ask, I'm not some crazed lunaholic, I literally just looked this up on Wikipedia. I mean, they didn't even bother to include the Japanese soldiers, so we can indulge in some playful racism. Hey, one for you, monkey face. And don't shout this plenty for all. Here you are, slain eyes. I don't know about you, but that's high art right there. So, uninspired enemies as well. Can this game be saved by the overall execution? Well... 
not really. A good word to describe Bugs Bunny's ball busters would be janky. Everything feels very stiff and jumpy, like half the animation frames were taken away, especially with the scrolling. In most games, the scrolling is very smooth, but not here. It has a nauseating effect when it scrolls, like it has to load every single frame for a fraction of a second, and this tends to be an issue with every animation. It's like the game holds on for a fraction of a second too long, which kind of makes the game feel slow, honestly. It means everything moves slower and less smooth than it should, and everything has a slight but noticeable delay. It's nothing serious, but it does mean that it's not going to feel as good to play by default. Just look at something like Mega Man. Every single animation is smooth as hell and rattles off the moment you press the button. Slick as butter. Putting even the slightest handicap on the player makes the game's skill and difficulty not based around design, but rather around getting past how hard the game is screwing you over. So intricate design and unique skillful challenges are almost impossible. So that just means that Bugs Bollock Burning Barrage has very basic level design for the most part. There's some verticality, but nothing special. You kinda just go from left to right and occasionally back left. You have these Mario pipe style things that aren't necessarily pipes all the time that transport you to different areas. I knew I should have taken that left point of Albuquerque. But it has the Mario Maker problem of not having any way to transport you to an unconnected area from the rest of the level, instead opting to transport you to another out of the way part of the level, which isn't a gameplay problem, more of an aesthetic problem, in that it clutters up the level design and might confuse you at times. And then there's another minor issue, in that with the nature of some of the level design, you're never sure whether you're supposed to drop down or if it'll be an instant death drop. So you might try to drop down, but end up falling to your death instead. I wouldn't have a problem with this if there was some sort of indication of what drops were safe and which which ones aren't. The active confusion of the player is level design 101. All you would really need to do would be lower the camera slightly, and maybe even put some items to indicate where you're supposed to go. The most complex thing you have to contend with is bashing the floor to get to a lower point, because I guess the game couldn't handle anything better than this. That's unless you count the horribly nauseating earthquake levels or the collapsing ground. Shit, did somebody give FUD the magic helmet again? So the inherent jankiness negates any possible good level design the game could have had in favor of just making the game slightly awkward to play. Well, that must mean Bugs Butt's Barnacle Bastards is really hard. Well, I wouldn't go that far. It's easy to die for sure, but I wouldn't say it's hard per se. Let me explain. You have a decent health bar that can take 6 or 7 hits, but the enemies that give you health are rare, and some of these levels can be very long and very treacherous without any checkpoints whatsoever. So if you die in a boss, guess who has to do upwards of 7 minutes of progress all over again, which wouldn't be that big of an issue, but the problem is your attack. Your only attack, the hammer, is almost useless. For one, the range is non-existent, so you find yourself swinging at nothing a lot of the time, and even when you do manage to hit an enemy, some of them damage you, and when you receive damage, and let me make it clear that this is by far the biggest issue with the game, you can't attack while you're stunned. Yeah. You know the invincibility frames you get in most games? They're here, but you don't get to attack during the fact. So there's almost no point in having it. It kneecaps you for something like a full three seconds, so all you can do in that time is run away. It completely defeats the purpose of itself. So you'll probably be inclined to just run away from most enemies because it's not worth the bother, which I think reflects bad design. Even then, you can get past most of the game just running away, occasionally tanking a few hits. But you still have to fight the bosses, which isn't that big of an issue for the most part, but you need to make sure that you have enough health to be able to take a few hits, because usually you'll get hit while attacking and have to retreat. So it's not so much how you do during the boss fight, it's more how you do leading up to the boss fight. If you don't get to the boss with at least two hearts, you have a stripper's chance in church. The absolute nadir of the game comes with the Yosemite Sam boss fight. He has ranged attacks that can kill you with full health in three hits, and he shoots three times before you have an opening. And if any of his bullets hit you with the rule that you can't attack while you're in post-hit invincibility, you won't be able to attack until the next round of bullets. It took me about six tries to beat him and every time I died and had to retry the entire level. This was a battle of attrition to say the least and is just awful. The rest of the bosses are fairly straightforward though. Daffy Duck is pitiful. You don't even need to fight him. Just grab the giant carrot. Wabbit season. Many of them kind of just move back and forth. Wile E. Coyote, Sylvester, and Sylvester Jr. Some characters are ineffectual, like Foghorn Leghorn, I say. You actually have to hit Henry Hawk, who doesn't even attack you. Then there's the mini-bosses. I already mentioned Daffy Duck, but then you have Elmer Fudd, who I'm pretty sure doesn't even attack you. He just hits you with a net which traps you for a few seconds. He might attack, but he never did to me. Then there's Tweety Bird, who all you have to do is lure him out and smack him upside the head. If I may digress for a moment, I remember growing up, and people around my age might remember a show called The Bugs Bunny and 
and Tweety show, where it was just essentially a show of a whole bunch of old Looney Tunes shorts kind of compiled into one space. And whenever the Tweety and Sylvester shorts came on, I always cheered for Sylvester because... <laughs> Tweety was such an arrogant prick. Like, seriously, I hated that arrogant prick so much, I just wanted to see him get his beak pushed in. So, say what you will about this game, but it's the only game that I know of where you can brutally beat the shit out of Tweety with a hammer. <laughs> The only other boss that actually attacks you, other than the final boss and conservative Sam, is Pepe Le Pew, or as I like to call him, Pepe Le French Stereotype. And his one attack is that he releases his... you know... skunk fumes in your face. That's actually another thing. I remember the Pepe Le Pew shorts were my least favorite ones to watch, because Pepe Le Pew was such a one-note joke, and that joke is, <laughs> isn't sexual assault funny? No, it's, it's really not. It's really not. I guess there was also the, haha, he stinks so much that he ruins everything around him, which was mildly amusing for maybe five minutes, but repetitive humor is never funny. 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 So his entire character was that he was A, a skunk, B, creepy as hell, and C, the most offensive French stereotype in the history of television. Oh my god, we've reached a paradox. Game theory, is Pepe Le Pew Le Paradox's grandfather? No. No. Well, hey, there are dumber theories they propose. Then when you get to the final world, the game shifts the bullshit throttle into high gear with such wonderful hazards as springs into spikes and false platforms. Beyond Yosemite Sam, this is by far the hardest part of the game, but after tanking a mountain of hazards, you finally make it to the final boss. Huh? Tasmanian Devil is the final boss? Why? All things considered, he's a fairly minor character in Looney Tunes. Why not someone like Marvin the Martian? He always seemed like the greatest nemesis. I mean, he was the only person with the capabilities and intention to destroy Earth, but they choose Taz? Well, whatever, you just hit the football back at him a few times, which is easier said than done because the timing's weird, and then you beat the game. You see, the problem with a lot of these bosses is that with the design of the combat prompting very inelegant strategies such as button mash, flail, and hope the boss dies before you do feels very clumsy. It's just a bunch of moving around spastically mashing the attack button. There's no grace, no poise, it's all the exact same boss fight and the exact same method minus minor changes. In fact, that goes for all the combat in the game. It's awkward, clumsy, and barely effective. All these problems combined makes it very easy to die. Also, shh, 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 come closer, all right? I'm gonna tell you a little secret. There are no continues, and there's no passwords. So if you don't beat this game in one sitting, all right, you have to do it all over again, which I think is absolutely bullshit. Especially for an NES game that's like two hours long. What's wrong with being able to pick up where we left off? Don't tell anyone I told you this, alright? Just between you and me. But then why did I say the game wasn't hard? Well, because it offsets its subpar design by giving you a generous stream of lives. And I mean generous. If you casually collect the carrot tokens in the levels, which double as platforms, you get a bingo game at the end of every level, which is entirely random. But just mash the attack button and you'll probably get at least a reliable three in a row, but sometimes you'll get four in a row and get five lives. Basically, this game compensates so hard for its design that it goes in the other direction, so I rely finish the game with more than 50 lives. Then there's the whack-a-mole game, which once again is completely random. There's no grace, just spastically move the d-pad and mash the attack button. By the way, I do apologize to all my British viewers for the use of the word spastic because I, I'm completely aware it means something completely different in your culture than what it means in my culture. So just be aware, I'm not using it in that way. Although I will say, I do enjoy using the word spastic as a derogatory term because it's one of the few words that Tumblr will not get on your case for using. Fucking spastic. So I have a lot negative to say about Bugs Bottle Baron Brewery. It's definitely the most disappointing nostalgic game I've ever played, but I don't 
think it's necessarily all bad. For all its flaws, I think it has the bones of a good action platformer, and all of these issues never add up to a deal break. They're needle pricks as opposed to sword slashes. I think the game looks really nice. The soundtrack, while a bit repetitive, is very jaunty and fun, capturing the feeling of Looney Tunes very well, and while not good, I can definitely say the gameplay is functional and with some fun to be had between all the questionable design decisions. It's not a good game, but it's not a bad game either. It's a straight shot middle of the road that I wish could have been better, it has some good, it has some bad, and in the end just lands in disappointing mediocrity. So it's a flawed game that just barely scrapes out a mediocre score. Would I recommend it though? Yes, it'll keep you occupied for a few hours, but I would say as long as you don't pay a cent over five dollars for it. I guess I should talk about the ending. So in the end, Bugs gets to the party and to his dismay sees all of his friends who were just trying to murder him. Turns out they were just trying to keep him occupied while they set up the party. I. I think that's what they were doing? Unless everybody just had a simultaneous change of hearts, which, in that case... Also, Bugs look like he's been doing too much of that good shit. He looks a fucked up. So a fairly underwhelming end to a fairly underwhelming game, as Bugs celebrates his 50th birthday. So, happy very, 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 very belated birthday to Bugs, and happy on-time birthday to me. And I'm glad to be here with all my adoring friends. So, uh, have a good night, everybody, and, um... Don't cry for me. How could this happen to me? I've made my mistakes. Got nowhere to run. That is simultaneously weak as hell and tastes like fucking sunscreen. Don't worry guys, it's literally just water. I, I dumped out what was left in here into another container and I filled this up with water. I also washed it out just to make sure that there was absolutely no trace of alcohol actually in here because in the middle of filming, I'm not gonna- It's the middle of the day, I'm not gonna get fucking pissed drunk in the middle of the day. Christ, that would be a disaster.